Hi, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining the Office of Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett Virtual Military Academy Day. My name is Candia Rivera, and I am the Veterans and Military Liaison for the Office. It is my pleasure to be here with you all again today as we listen to the Five Star Academies, ROTC from UVI, and a parent from the Military Academy, and most importantly, you, the students and the parents. Thank you all for joining. As we begin, I ask for your attention as we present the casting of the colors. have brief remarks from our very own Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett. Good evening, students, parents, teachers, presenters to the prestigious U.S. Military Service Academies seminar. I'm Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett, and it is indeed an honor for me to welcome you to our 2022 Virtual Military Academy Day. This evening, you will learn everything you need to know about each academy's requirements and the congressional nomination process. We have representatives from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, the U.S. Naval Academy, 
the U.S. Air Force Academy, U.S. Coast Guard Academy, and the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. You may also be interested in the ROTC program at our very own University of the Virgin Islands, which can be a great way to prepare to serve as a military officer while also getting a high quality college education. If you are already interested in a military career, a service academy can help you to get that career off the ground with a career and a degree. Every year, we receive nomination packets from students just like you who dream about the day they'll toss their hat in the air and graduate from one of the nation's military service academies. Each academy focuses on character development, leadership, and service to help you, the student, develop to your fullest potential. Like any top-tier college, with highly competitive acceptance rates and some special requirements for admission, getting into the service academies is not an easy process, but it is an enriching one in the end. Many successful applicants start preparing themselves for a service academy early on in high school, and some even sooner. Here are some tips to help you prepare for admission into any one of the five official U.S. military academies. One, show your interest in the academies early in high school. Two, engage in athletic and extracurricular activities, leadership and community involvement activities. Three, work on acquiring a strong GPA and test scores. Four, possibly join a junior ROTC. And most importantly, be prepared. Upon graduation at the service academies, you will receive a bachelor's degree and also be commissioned as a military officer. You will not only receive a quality education and prepare yourself for a career path, you will be trained to serve in the armed forces. Your experience will also include physical training, military studies, and an introduction to the demands of military discipline. Attending a service academy is not for everyone but it is my hope that the information you receive today will help you decide if a career in the military is a path for you. If you're up for the challenge, I ask that you take full advantage of the opportunity to apply to one of the service academies, which is, once admitted, a free tuition for you and your family. Also to the parents and teachers who may be present, I encourage you to take notes so that you can support your children and students in the decision-making process. And remember, the deadline for submitting your Service Academy nomination packet to my office is October 31st. You can contact Candia Rivera in our St. Croix office or Cletus Clendenin in our St. Thomas office for more information. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you, Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett, for those encouraging words. We will go ahead and begin the show with our first um, Air Force Academy, Major Spodlin. Are you ready pre to present? Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Awesome. Uh, my name is Major Jason Spaulding, and I represent USAFA, the United States Air Force Academy in beautiful Colorado Springs, Colorado. So. A quick overview for us, uh, you know, it's really just one giant city there in Colorado Springs, the Air Force Academy itself. We've got a little bit of everything going on, uh, 60 miles from Denver, if you didn't know, and it's on 19,000 uh, beautiful acres uh, right next to the Front Range in Colorado, just absolutely gorgeous. A little bit about the cadet wing. Uh, this, these are uh, numbers from just a couple years ago, but they're, they're pretty applicable to, to almost every year. Um, you know, you're going to have a majority, 70%, 25% uh, men to women, but otherwise all the 50 states are uh, accounted for. You've got a very diverse culture there and a little bit of everything in terms of uh, varsity athletics and the, the type of people that uh, show up to USAFA uh, earn the right to go there. And uh, 4,249, again, a number from a couple of years ago, but pretty accurate on an annual basis of who is attending USAFA. Here's just a smattering of classes that we have, 27 available majors, four minors. Uh, most of this is uh, year to year rolls over. There's not a lot of uh, change in terms of what you see on your screen here. But again, a little bit of everything for everyone. So if you've got an interest in, in any number of things, we've probably got it for you uh, here at USAFA. 
core curriculum, this is a little bit of a busy slide, but uh, from left to right, you'll just see there's a progression in terms of uh, what you're learning and kind of how you're learning it. Uh, core 93 semester hours of academic courses, and then you'll get five semester hours of physical ed along with that. We pride ourselves on our small class sizes. You get an eight to one student to faculty ratio. So you're getting a lot of uh, hands-on, a lot of attention in terms of the instructor core, uh, amazing instructor core we have at USAFA. And you're gonna have 15 to 20 students per class. So small class sizes, uh, you've got a great ratio and a lot of uh, accessible faculty. Uh, at USAFA, if you've got issues uh, with a certain topic or subject, your uh, teachers, your, the faculty there are really available uh, most hours of the day and night. Um, so you've got a lot, it's a strict, you know, strict regimen. There's a lot of challenges, but there's also a lot of support at USAFA. A little bit of a daily schedule, just kind of a snapshot, not necessarily what you're gonna experience, you know, every day as you go there, but uh, you can see it's pretty well packed, uh, as you would imagine from a top-notch university uh, uh, such as the Air Force Academy. But uh, you can kind of just look through it yourself. Uh, it's it's jam packed full of good good things. You get some personal development time uh, to kind of gather yourself, and then it's off to the races until lights out. Sports. I alluded to it earlier. Uh, once again, if you if you are interested in a sport, we've probably got it. Um, uh, men, women's side, both. A little bit of everything in terms of Division One sports at USAFA, uh, along with some co-ed uh, sports on the side there. And intramurals, uh, if it's not quite, uh, you know, something that you're as serious about, maybe not scholarship worthy, but something you're interested in. Once again, we've probably got it at USAFA. There's a lot going on there, a lot for you. And even some club sports. All right, uh, academic, cultural, music, you can see all the different sections here. Uh, it's this whole person concept at, uh, at the academy in terms of the things you're gonna learn and uh, you know, trying to really incorporate all aspects of your life into a four-year block, uh, uh, training and learning to be an Air Force officer and then uh, go off and serve your country. So um, look through the, the, the little chart here, but there's a lot of everything uh, going on for, for all all types of people, no matter what your interests are, we probably got it. And then there's some summer training every year. As you enter uh, the program, you're gonna have basic training. And then it progresses from there and you slowly kind of go into more and more of a leadership position until your senior year when you're running the program, uh, which is amazing. Uh, again, you're, you're not paying for it, right? Your parents are pretty excited about that. That's, that's probably one of the things they're most excited about. Uh, you're getting a full scholarship with tuition, room and board, all the coverages you would need in terms of uniforms and, and laptops and all that. Uh, plus a stipend, which increases every year. So as you progress through this, you're gonna get more and more money on the side, uh, which is a nice little benefit as well. You're gonna get a bachelor's of science, no matter what you studied, it'll end up being a bachelor's of science of some kind. You'll get commissioned as an officer in the, in the US Air Force and you're gonna serve a minimum of five years, probably more than that, depending on what you're doing. Uh, if you're gonna be a pilot, it's gonna be more like 10 to 12 years and it's gonna be something, a shorter term, but no less than five after that for every other career field. Guaranteed, guaranteed employment, once again, all the different things that you can do. This is just a, a little snapshot of some of the things that you could do. There's a lot of different jobs in the Air Force for you. Uh, if you do not get into USAFA right away, there are prep schools. We've got the Academy Prep School, and then there's also the Falcon Foundation. Um, and, and I'll speak more of that, uh, you know, with individuals on the side later. But bottom line is, even if you don't get into USAFA, there are options for progressing into USAFA uh, the year after. You know, you'd go to this, do these programs for a year, and then you'd apply again for USAFA and, and hopefully get in. Summer seminar we alluded to a little bit earlier, six-day program. Uh, you're gonna, this is prior to going to USAFA. A lot of people have applied for that. In fact, we should be finding out any minute now, uh, any day now about uh, this summer, who is, uh, who's accepted to summer seminar. A little bit of the requirements. I won't go too far into this because the update of the list is on the portal, which I'll get to in just a minute. Some recommended courses for you guys. And this uh, slideshow is available for everybody after this as well. Um, the Congresswoman's office has a copy. 
Yes, we pride ourselves on how awesome we are. There are a lot of amazing uh, stats that come out of you software every single year. And we're always on one of the top lists for the nation. This is a couple, actually, no, this is updated, 2022. A little bit of information. And here's the website I'm talking about. If you just go online and uh, Google USAFA and there's the Start Your Online Application, you'll find out all this information and a lot more uh, as you get going uh, towards your application. And that's all I've got for you. And I appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Moving right along, we would have a U.S. Virgin Islands cadet um, by the name of Silas, who is currently enrolled at the Coast Guard Academy. Um, Silas, are you there? Good evening. Um, I'm second class Silas Weishart. Uh, I'm a junior here at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy, so I'm, I'm here right now. Um, I don't have slides, uh, so I'm just going to kind of talk on the Coast Guard Academy a little bit. Um, and uh, give you just some, some outlying information. So the first thing that I think is prominent here is to get into the Coast Guard Academy, you don't need a congressional nomination um, like you do with the other service academies. Um, so there, there's no need for that. You can just apply um, much different than the Air Force Academy and, and, and West Point. Um, so what I would recommend, if you're interested at all in going to a service academy, um, especially going to the Coast Guard Academy, but any of the service academies really is going to what we call uh, the AIM program. That stands for Academy Introductory Mission. Um, and so that's a, a week-long program in between your junior and your senior year um, in high school. And what you do is you come up to the Coast Guard Academy for a week, and uh, we basically give you um, an overview of what it's like to be trained here at the Coast Guard Academy. So it's a little intense. There's some yelling. Uh, there's some there's a lot of physical activity, but there's also a lot of learning about about what the Coast Guard is, what the Coast Guard Academy is about, um, and what we do here. And so I did that. Um, it was a great experience. Uh, it taught me a lot about the Coast Guard, and it, it ultimately be, uh, ended up being one of the deciding factors and in, in why I decided to come here. Um, so I highly recommend if you're interested, it's going to give you a really good idea of what it's like to be a cadet at the Coast Guard Academy and a cadet at, at any service academy, really. Um, very realistic program, um, really good for just a, a small snapshot. So if you're interested at all, um, apply. Uh, I think you can still apply for this year if you're a junior right now, like I said, in between your junior and your senior year. Um, so the next thing I'd like to touch on is that you don't need a whole lot of prep time in order to, to go to the Coast Guard Academy. So uh, I got interested in the Coast Guard Academy uh, basically during my senior year at, 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 in high school. Um, and so I, I wasn't prepping for, you know, years or, or a really long time prior to coming to the academy. So don't feel like um, if you haven't been preparing at all, it's too late. It's not too late. You can still uh, get interested. You can still get involved um, and you can still apply and get in. Um, so one, one of the things that was touched on during the Air Force Academy uh, presentation was the prep school. Uh, and so I just like to touch on that because the Coast Guard Academy, uh, as well as the other service academies, have a has a prep school as well. And I did that. Um, basically, uh, I applied to the Coast Guard Academy out of high school, and they looked at my academics and they they said, uh, you know, those could be a little better, but we would still like you at the academy. And so they sent me to um, a military prep institute in Alabama for a year before coming here as a cadet. Um, and that was a great experience. So. Even if uh, you, your academics need maybe a little bit of work, uh, just like mine did, um, you can still go to prep school. That's a really great experience. Um, meet some new people, you get accustomed to the military, and then after a year there, you, you go to the actual academy, and then uh, you graduate. So moving on a little bit to the cadet side, um, it's just pretty much the same as the Air Force Academy and any other service academy um, four-year program. Uh, after your four years here, you're gonna commission as an officer in the US Coast Guard. You have a five-year uh, service commitment coming out of the academy. And after that, you can either get out or you can continue your career. Um, that said, in comparison to the other service academies, the Coast Guard Academy is uh, a lot smaller. We currently have a core of cadets that's about 1,100 cadets here. Uh, so that's about a quarter of the size of the other academies. Um, there are strengths and weaknesses to that. Um, I like the smaller, uh, the smaller core. It's nice, I get to know more people. Um, that being said, there's less sports. 
than you might find at the other academies. Um, less diversity. Uh, I'm currently the only cadet here from the US Virgin Islands. So if someone would like to join me here, um, I would appreciate that. Uh, I, I, uh, I miss my uh, fellow Virgin Islanders. So I am currently uh, majoring in management, um, business management. Uh, aside from that, we also have engineering majors that include civil engineering, um, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. Uh, we also have a cyber systems major. We have a government major, um, a marine environmental science, and uh, a couple more. So not a whole lot of majors, uh, not a lot to choose from, but we have really good programs, uh, really good teachers, really good instructors, uh, really good departments. So I don't have uh, I don't have much more to touch on. If you are at all interested, uh, you can reach out to me. My phone number is 340-690-5866. That's 340-690-5866. If you'd like to go know anything at all, um, you can also go to the website, which is uscga.edu. Uh, that will give you a, a pretty good overview of what cadet life is like and uh, what the Coast Guard is. So uh, thank you for your time and uh, have a good night. Thank you, Silas. Thank you. We greatly appreciate it. <laughs> Moving right along, we'll go ahead with our Coast Guard Academy um, Administrator, um, Lieutenant Jacob Brown. Are you available? There you go. <laughs> yeah, that was that was awesome. Thanks, Silas, so much. <laughs> Got a hometown hero right on board here. So definitely. Yes, yeah, right in really, sync. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Really proud and, and grateful for him. And I know I had a very good friend and Miss Nikki Barnes, class of 2017. She was a sailor. She recently just completed the 420 Olympics and, you know, they placed 15th in the whole entire world. So yes, it's not bronze or gold or silver, but it's pretty darn good if you do say, if I do say so myself. And so I definitely, Silas did an, an excellent job here. I'll share my screen for just one quick second here, just to, to, to additionally tap onto some of the things that were previously mentioned. So the US Coast Guard Academy is in New London, Connecticut in the Northeast part of the United States. I am the admissions officer for the Southeast to include the Virgin Islands, fortunately. And so I will be the direct liaison for each of you that are interested in applying. So definitely, again, we hope that you are able to do so. I'm hoping to come out to your area this upcoming fall as well and bring a lot of Coast Guard Academy gear. So definitely prepare for that to make sure we have some hats and things like that to protect you from the sunshine out there. But again, very small school, as was previously mentioned, a thousand of us in total as compared to a thousand per class, which is of course is significantly smaller than the service academies and then some of the civilian institutions as well. We do compete at the division three level as opposed to the division one, no congressional nominations there. We are SAT, ACT optional. And so if you would, wouldn't like to submit those, you do not have to. However, if you do want to submit those, of course, you can do that too. And one of the biggest things that, you know, again, is a bit different for us is you will graduate and be a commission officer in the U.S. Coast Guard, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security, as opposed to the Department of Defense. And so we do have official 11 statutory missions that, of course, include national defense and include joint operations with the U.S. Navy, with the, with the French Navy, with the Royal Bohemian Defense Force, and so on and so forth. But of course, it also includes various other things, such as search and rescue and ICE operations. And so despite what many believe, as we like to say, the Coast Guard Academy, the sun never sets on the Coast Guard Academy. And so we definitely have opportunities for you to be stationed in the Middle East of Bahrain. If you like to be stationed in Africa, you could do so. You want to be stationed in California and be an officer in charge of making sure that everyone that goes through a Hollywood movie has on the correct Coast Guard uniform. You can do that. Our director of admissions, Captain Michael Freedy, actually did that job before he came to the academy to be the director of admissions. And so host of jobs for you to do. You can stay here on this side of the hemisphere. You can venture over to the other side of the hemisphere. You can go back home to the Virgin Islands or you can go to Virginia. And so completely up to you. But again, if you have any questions, I did provide my email and my contact there and I'll continue to drop links. But thank you all again for the opportunity. And thank you, Congresswoman and staff for allowing us to speak here this evening. Thank you. I'm moving right along. We'll have the Naval Academy. Um, Lieutenant Emery, are you there? Good evening, everyone. My name is Lieutenant Emily. I'm a admissions, one of the admissions counselors for the Southeast region of the United States to include the Virgin Islands. 
uh, happy to be here to talk to you a little bit about the United States Naval Academy. Uh, here's just a snapshot of the Naval Academy. We also, like the Air Force Academy, have an eight to one student faculty ratio. Uh, we have a 89% graduation rate, uh, zero full year tuition costs, 100% post graduation employment, and we offer 26 academic. We are located in the capital city of Maryland, Annapolis, which is about 25 miles to Washington, D.C., as well as Baltimore, Maryland. We offer everything you need from borrow shops to a post office on the campus, and we have a little over 4,500 students in the brigade. It's a four-year college. Uh, you're going to graduate with a Bachelor of Science. We have 26 majors. Two-thirds of those fall into the STEM category, while the rest of the other third is about uh, humanities and social sciences. Uh, like the Naval, uh, the Air Force Academy, we also have a stipend that increases the same amount uh, as you go on. You get the same full scholarship with tuition, room board, meals, and uh, medical and dental. And uh, once you graduate as a officer in the United States Navy, there's multiple paths you can take, surface warfare, aviation, special warfare, submarines, and 25% of everyone from the Naval Academy will go Marine Corps as well. You have this uh, minimum five-year service commitment, but if you go aviation, that's more likely to be eight. Here's a look at the 26 majors that we offer. We also have uh, minors in the uh, select languages if you are interested in those. We're a Division I school as well with 33 teams. We also have club sports that uh, are also competitive and travel around the country competing against other club sports and intramurals if that's more your speed. Uh, this is what a um, it's going to look like if you're a candidate, you're going to be, those are the things that are needed for the application, as well as if you're in, uh, for high school, we're going to need your transcripts, uh, test scores, um, all your candidate information. Two summer programs that I like to highlight, we also have a summer seminar that uh, shows you what life is going to be like for uh, rising 12th graders. It's a six-day session in June. Uh, it's Tuition is $650, but there's also financial aid for tuition and travel. We also have a STEM-focused one, which is for rising 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. It's going to be taught by our professors and midshipmen. It's six days in June with a tuition of $900, but financial aid is also available for that one if you are interested. Here's some advice that we have for admissions. We let, we're looking for a strong foundation in math and science. We don't have a minimum GPA. We like to say just strive to be in the top 20% of your high school. Uh, your SAT, ACT, you can, we do super score. You can take it as many times as you want. We'll take your best score. We always encourage AP and honors courses, as well as we're looking for well-rounded individuals, leadership in sports, clubs, jobs, anything that you have leadership, we love to see. Uh, here's some reasons that we like to say going to the Naval Academy. And here is where you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or you can text those to NASA STEM to 797979 to get more information. You can also go to NavalAcademySports.com if you have any interest in uh, sports or any recruiting into a sport that you have any interest in. Thank you for allowing me to be here and talk to you. I'm happy to answer any questions, and I'll put my email and contact information in the chat as well. Moving right along, we'll go ahead with West Point Academy. I am prior active duty, so take it away, Lieutenant Smith. Hey everyone, thank you for having me today. Um, I'm First Lieutenant Courtney Smith. I am about to share you all my screen. Um, but before we start, I do want to kick off with a quick video um, to show you all what you can possibly see yourself doing as a cadet at the United States Academy. And your task is clear. It is to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and to defend the American people. And you will do that through readiness, readiness for combat. You didn't come here to play ping pong. You came here to learn how to fight, and fight you will. You are this nation's next greatest generation. You're an amazing group of people. You possess the same competence, the same compassion, and the same character as those who have gone before you in the long gray line here at West Point. Among you is a future president, senator, or members of Congress and captains of industry, entrepreneurs and scientists. 
But most importantly, among you are our future platoon and company and battalion brigade, division and corps commanders. And each of you will be taking a lifelong oath No matter what the pressure, no matter what the cost to yourself, your career, or even your life, you must never waver. Your competence, compassion, and character are going to be tested. You're going to operate in unbelievably miserable and spartan conditions. And you're going to make decisions in incredibly morally ambiguous situations. And you're going to be fighting against a dedicated, ruthless enemy who is going to give you no quarter. But like those that came before you, you're going to prevail. And you will win. Awesome. That video pumps me up every single time. Um, we'll go right into, oh, let me share, share my screen again with you. So you can see my PowerPoint. Awesome, can you all hear me still? Yes, we can. Perfect, perfect. Um, so this is a short deck that I have for you all today, just to kind of teach you all about West Point. First and foremost, I am First Lieutenant Courtney Smith. I work here directly at West Point in the missions. I am the Far West Outreach Officer. Um, so before we start, I want everyone to know that um, you must go on our website to complete what we call the candidate questionnaire, here highlighted in yellow. Um, in order for your actual application to open. Um, juniors can apply. Um, our application opened up for them February 1st this year. So you can start applying right now, but before you actually apply, you must complete the candidate questionnaire on our website, which is westpoint.edu. Here's what we look at in admissions um, from all of our candidates. We're looking for well-rounded um, applicants. Um, this is just a breakdown of how your application is broken up into. So you have 60% academic, which is weighted on your GPA, as well as your standardized test score. So when it comes to taking the SAT or ACT, you can take either one. So pick your poison. Um, if you decide to take the SAT, you do not have to take it with the essay. But if you decide to take the ACT, you must take it with writing. Um, you can take either one. They're weighted the same. And then we also do what you call super scoring, where we take up your highest scores you've ever achieved. So that actually helps you to take it more than once. 30% um, is consisted of your leadership capabilities that we look at here at the academy, which are your, consists of your school official evaluations, which are just your letters of recommendations from your instructors. So you'll have four, one from your math instructor, which has to be from a pre-calculus or higher. So if you haven't take, taken pre-calc or calculus, try to get that on your schedule if West Point something that you can see yourself doing. Any English teacher, um, physics or chemistry instructor. So if you haven't taken either one of those two, make sure you try to take one or the other or both while you're in high school. And then last but not least, one has to come from your physical education teacher. Um, you will conduct what you call an interview um, that your field force can conduct for you. And then you'll have an extracurricular um, section for you to complete um, to tell us everything you've done inside and outside of school to include any volunteer work, any W-2 paid employee work, um, any organizations you're a part of or started or any nonprofits. And then in addition to your 90%, you have 10%, which is weighted on your candidate fitness assessment. Um, it's six different events. All of the instructions are located on, on the website when, once you apply, as well as videos. Um, so unlike the other academies, we require push-up, flex arm hang, and or pull-up video submissions for your CFA. However, if you decide to apply to all of the service academies and you already completed your Naval or Air Force Academy CFA, you can have it forwarded to us, but we still require the video submission. Um, on top of your whole candidate, um, what we call score, you must also become medically qualified and receive a congressional nomination. And one thing I want to point out to you all, we do have a very, very early deadline for our application. Um, that is January 31st of every single year. Here's what we offer. Um, here are our rankings across the board. So take a look at these. But the one I want to highlight most is that we do have the number one most accessible professors. Um, for myself, I was recruited. I ran track as well as played D1 um, rugby here at the academy, all inclusive while being an engineer major. Um, so 
one key thing that I loved about being on these teams and traveling the world and, you know, competing against other D1 teams was the fact that my teachers actually traveled with me. Um, so I'm not sure if the other academies do this. So if I needed to take, you know, a math exam or a physics, you know, what we call written partial review or any test or anything like that, or just getting um, staying on top of my schoolwork in line with all the other cadets who, who do not choose to do D1 athletes, um, D1 sports actually helped me stay up, keep my head above water um, academically while at the academy. Um, here are all 36 majors that we offer. Me personally, I was a systems engineer major. We also offer 15 different minors. Key thing to note on this slide, we offer anything from STEM to liberal arts majors. Um, freshmen will pick their majors second semester freshman year. Um, when I went through, through the academy, I didn't get to pick my major until um, the first semester of my second year at the academy. But we do offer everything that you can possibly think of. Um, here are some of the career opportunities that you can go into. Um, Post-graduating from West Point, we do offer aviation if you want to be a pilot. We do offer cyber, which is one of our newest branches. Me personally, I'm a signal court officer. Um, so I'm a telecommunications officer, have my top secret security clearance. I'm only 26, I make about 110K per year. Um, any of the white ones are what we call your starting career opportunities um, that you get to pick from and rank from order one through 17 while you're a cadet here at the academy. Most cadets get what we call in their top five percent or their top five choices of whatever career opportunity that they want to do. After about three years and any of the ones in white, you can opt into, if you so choose to, to do any of the ones that are subsequent career opportunities here, like special forces or become a lawyer for the Army in the Judge Advocate Corps, as well as doing different functional area opportunities, which is something that I actually just opted into this year. So I am still a Signal Corps officer, but I'm actually a network systems engineer for the Army as we speak. So I love the IT side. Um, here's a quick snapshot of what your typical day will look like at the academy. Um, don't be afraid of this 520 wake up. That's mainly for the D1 athletes who had practice before classes like I did, but everything else is about the same for every single cadet here at the academy. We do have what you call TAPS, which is our curfew, which is 1130 every night, except for Saturday nights at 01. So one in the morning on Saturdays is when you have to be back within your company area or if you don't know what a company is, that is just your first group of people that you're kind of placed with here at the academy uh, where you live at in your dorms. Here are all of our sports that we offer that are D1 sports uh, on the men's and women's side. Um, we even have a rifle team, which I never heard of until I actually went to West Point. Um, and like I told you, I ran track and played rugby D1 at the academy. Here are some of our club sports. These are just a few of them, not all of them. Um, we also even have a parachute team if you wanna learn how to parachute out of airplanes. That's something you could do here at the academy. Um, it, we range anything from triathlon to crew, equestrian and fencing for club sports. And then if you don't decide to try out for any of the D1 teams or club teams, then you will at a minimum play intramural sports, which can range any, anywhere from functional fitness to submission grappling, all the way up until ultimate Frisbee. These are very intense sports still, even though they're not club and D1 sports, you will still have a really good time playing emerald sports, very competitive here at the academy. Um, we do have a summer leaders experience as well. We call it SLE um, and our application deadline has now extended to April. So we, we have until April 1st to apply if this is something you wanna do for about a week. Um, we also waive tuition and costs and flight costs and everything for you if you're someone who needs help financially to get here for your week. We offer it during more than one time within the summer so that you can also go check out the other service academies, you know, summer leaders experiences that they offer at their schools. If you wanna stay connected with us, um, please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or watch some of our YouTube videos. And here is our website if you have any questions about West Point. Um, and this concludes my brief. If you have any questions, I did put my information in our chat as well for you to save for the future. Thank you all for having me today. Um, I am very, very thankful that you all have some propensity to want to serve in the military. Um, I had a great time at the academy and I love working here and calling people and letting them know if they got accepted or not. So please reach out, don't hesitate. My cell phone is also in the chat as well if you have any questions. Moving right along, we would have Commander, oh, where is it, Morrison um, from, ROTC at the UBI. Are you there? 
Yes, uh, Captain Morbido is going to uh, upload his uh, slides. Perfect. Thank you for joining, Captain Morbido. Uh, my name is Captain Morbido. I'm the Assistant Professor of Military Science at the University of the Virgin Islands ROTC program. Uh, if a military academy is intimidating or you just don't want to make that long of a commitment, ROTC is always an option. We are at and currently, I'm at University of Virgin Islands, but you can go through ROTC at any major university. We offer scholarships uh, from the four year all the way up to, well, from two to four year scholarships. So if you uh, apply at the four year mark and you don't get it, you can keep applying until you uh, do. We offer $5,000 a semester and $600 in books, plus housing scholarships. Um, upon contracting, you will receive a $420 monthly stipend. And uh, also, upon graduation, commissions the Army, either active duty, reserve, or National Guard. So if you don't want to be a active duty officer, but you still want to serve your country, uh, you want to commission Army Reserve or National Guard, those are always options for uh, through ROTC. Uh, for us, there's not a super long enrollment process. It's pretty easy. Uh, you just have to be a student enrolled at the University of Virgin Islands or the college you attend, you want to attend. Uh, and then apply or attend the military science courses at your university and eventually work towards a contract with that university or the University of Virgin Islands. Once you pass your physical and get all your paperwork done, you commission as a cadet, you'll receive your scholarship and stipend. And then uh, for us, it's pretty much just being a normal student, going through college, working towards being a lieutenant, and upon graduation, uh, you'll have a career for you ready to go. Lieutenant Lawrence, would you like to add anything? Um, yes, for those of you guys who are interested, I'll leave or have questions, I'll leave my uh, information in the chat. They can reach me. I'll leave mine as well. This is going to conclude our, our brief. Moving right along, we'll have a parent um, who is currently um, has two sons, one at the Air Force Academy and one who would be joining the Naval Academy. Um, her name is Yesenia. Are you there? Hello, I am here. How are you? I'm doing <laughs> fine. Thank you for joining. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, hi, I have um, uh, Nakai and uh, who's in the Air Force Academy and then another son, Kekoa Alexander, who just got accepted into the um, Naval Academy. Um, one of them, my oldest one, Nakai is going for, uh, he was actually homeschooled and he went he, to the Air Force Academy and, um, or he's going, he just finished his first year, which is really exciting. He is um, uh, an astronautical engineering major or hopes to be, uh, if not aeronautical. Of course, like one of the gentlemen said, uh, you find out or actually you actually get your major the first year of, I think it was the first, the second year, the first semester of the second year. So he's not there yet. Um, he did get into azimuth, which is a new program um, for the Space Force, which he's really excited about. Um, it's new this year and he's just ecstatic about that. My other son um, will be starting the Naval Academy for um, hoping to get into ocean engineering as an ocean engineering major. Um, one of the things I, as far as applying um, to other parents and to students who are wanting to apply for the academies um, are, you know, it's a lot more involved than a lot of universities. Uh, you know, you have your um, nomination that you have to put the application for. They're, it's a really long process. Um, I think that it's very difficult than a different than a typical university. I also have a, another son who's going to um, university, and uh, the application is much different. Um, it's definitely a more time commitment and having all your documents and your ducks in a row. Um, it's really good that they have the preliminary application. Um, one of the things I would recommend is start gathering everything you can possibly gather now, like as soon as you can, because your resume um, is really important. There's a lot of 
a lot of things, a lot of templates you can go to online to follow. The academies are excellent at um, guiding you along into kind of what are the most important things to put on the resumes. Um, uh, one of the big things is uh, volunteering, um, support like community, your community service is really important. Um, any kind of extracurricular activities. I feel like one of the things that I learned from asking the admissions officers helping us along the way um, was multitasking. I kind of want to see leadership and the ability to multitask and be involved with multiple things. Um, that'll be important for the resume. So it takes a while though, because I can tell you the first time my son did his resume and wrote his essays, he must have written I, I can't even count how many times both of them rewrote and rewrote and rewrote essays. They just wanted them perfect because they wanted so much to get in and how much weight actually is put on um, the essays or the personal statements. So um, I would highly recommend to, to gather documents, start early. Also just getting your teachers right now um, because they do need recommendations from a math teacher, from an English teacher. So start communicating now with them for recommendations. Um, and um, yeah, so and just a lot of encouragement along the way. But once you get there, it's amazing. My son just recently, uh, after talking to him, I think I talked to him yesterday, he finished his um, recognition. And it's something that the first year or the first year that you're there, you, you everybody works up to their recognition. And once you get recognition, things get what I hear a little bit easier. Um, not that it's easy, it's tough, but he says, mom, I realized the toughest things I ever done in my life are um, was this last year getting through basics and this first year of, and he says, but I love it. It's so empowering. <laughs> so um, yeah, so just keep at it because it's amazing to discover what you're capable of is, is based his words so okay thank you and i'm available for any questions at all after but thank you thank you so much for that and good luck to your boys thank you thank you so much for that and good luck to your boys thank you Moving right along, we'll go ahead and have Commander Watson um, from the Merchant Marine. Thank you, Commander Watson, for joining. All righty. Good afternoon and her good evening, everyone. My name is Commander Watson. I am the Assistant Director of Missions at the United States Merchant Marine Academy. I am excited to have this opportunity to present to you. Now, I'm going to start off right off the bat. Everyone says, what is the Merchant Marine? We are the most important thing to you every day of the week. Why would I say that? If you stop and think about everything you use every day of the week, 90% of it wasn't made in America. So how does all those good things, you know, that cell phone you like so much, the TV you look at, the cars your family drive, how do all those foreign products get to the U.S.? And how do all our products get shipped to other countries? Shipping. Shipping is one of the largest and one of the highest paid industries in the world. Most people don't know that there is a federal service academy for the shipping industry, and that's the United States Merchant Marine Academy. So real quick, some things I wanna tell you about the Merchant Marine Academy. We are a service academy, but we're not a military academy. We said we are a maritime academy. However, because we use tax dollars to pay for your education so you can go, we are tuition free, there is a service connection. Number two, we do not come under the Department of Defense. We come under the Department of Transportation. So a student who come to us, graduate from us with one of the top engineering degrees in the country. However, when they graduate, it is up to you if you're going to go into the maritime industry or if you're going to serve in the military full time. Now, I said that. So let me tell you how that works. If you decide to go in the maritime industry, you will spend five years in the maritime industry and you will also be an officer in the military part time. 
and how you fulfill that and while you're in the maritime industry is only two weeks a year for eight years. Okay, do the math now. Two weeks a year for eight years. That's not even a year worth of military service. But for those individuals that come to our school and decide they don't want to go into the maritime industry, then you have to spend at least five years in the military or the National Oceanic Atmosphere Administration or the Space Force or the Department of Health, all depending on what's available at the time when you graduate. We don't care because we're the transportation industry. We're the only service academy to, you can come to, graduate from, and become an officer in any branch of the mil military you want. That's really exciting. So that's my introduction for right now, but I'm gonna show you a quick uh, slide that'll give you more insight into the Merchant Marine Academy. All right, I hope everybody can see this. Our academy is located at 83 waterfront acres along the Long Island Sound. Uh, we're just 20 miles east of New York City. We are one of the smaller academies. We only have about a thousand men and women, but there's never a time when all our students are on the campus at the same time because they travel and see the world. The average, every student sees on the average between 15 and 20 countries during their four years at the academy. That's exciting. So once again, what does Merchant Mariners do? The U.S. Merchant Marine consists of privately owned U.S. registered ships. We provide waterborne transportation for passengers and cargoes moving in domestic and international commerce. And in time of war and national emergency, U.S. Merchant Marine serves as the fourth arm of defense. So what would you earn? A student that comes to our school will earn a bachelor's of science degree. All the service academies only have one degree, which is a bachelor of science. They have multiple disciplines. Our school focuses specifically on the maritime industry. So you will receive a, a bachelor of science degree. You will also receive a commission as an officer in either branch of the service you choose. You will also be an officer in the maritime industry if you decide to do that and be a licensed officer. And you will experience, receive an experience of a lifetime. Now our education is valued at approximately $293,000. That's tuition free. Now, I told you that we're the Academy of Choice, and I spoke on this a bit earlier, but this is it in depth. So if you decide to go into the maritime industry, you must spend five years, maintain a U.S. Coast Guard license for six years. The license is actually only good for five, but they have you take it over before it expires and then in the reserve for eight years. And then, as I spoke earlier, if you decide to go active duty for the National Ocean Administration or the Space Force, if those slots are available, you must spend five years on active duty. So I told you we have one degree, but here are the uh, disciplines and majors that you can uh, study. And that's marine transportation, maritime logistics and security, marine engineering, marine engineering systems, marine engineering and shipyard management. For our traditional sports, I'm not gonna read them all, but our traditional sports is a division three sports. However, our waterfront program, all waterfront programs from all colleges are not really NCAA sports, but they do compete like NCAA Division I sports. So our waterfront program, which we have one of the finest waterfront programs in, in the country, we have power squadron, dinghy, rowing, offshore sailing, and sports fishing. We have a host of clubs. And if we have a club or activity and it's not there and someone wants to create one, we will help you create one. But some of the clubs I do like to highlight is number one, we have a band. That's not a club, but we do have a band. Uh, we also have a cultural diversity service club. We have a service doll program where students are a great high performing students are able to get a puppy and raise a puppy while they're at the academy and then turn them over as a service dog. And we have an EMT program where our students are certified both for uh, EMT service on the academy and out into society. So there's lots of things to do at the academy. I spoke briefly about C. I said earlier, every student uh, sees anywhere between 15 and 20 countries while they're at school. 
that's called seeing you. Two distinctive things about seeing you. Even though you're traveling the world, we want you to enjoy it, you are still in school. So while you're traveling and seeing the world, you are given C of science. That's really important because we don't want you to get distracted because when you come back from C, you have five days to do what we call a C report. Now, you don't go out to C for one whole year. How it really works is in between your freshman and sophomore year, you go out to C for four months. And then in, you come back to the school in between your junior and senior year, you go out to see for eight months. I call it ship hopping. One week you might be in Africa, the next week you might be in China, next week who tell, who knows where you might be. And you're on various types of ships. You'll be on cargo ships, you'll be on military ships. We want you to get a full view and experience of the maritime industry. But this is the most valuable thing about the maritime industry. I mean, about sea year. What we actually doing is sending you, putting you in a real world a, a, a situation where you can learn from individuals that's actually doing a job that you're in school learning. And while you're out there at sea, you're actually getting paid. So our graduates are not only college graduates, they're college graduates with a year's worth of real world paid experience. That's why employers are uh, willing to start our students off, those that go into the maritime industry with such a high salary. The average starting salary for a student that's going in the maritime industry, first job with no educational debt, is between eighty-five dollars and $145,000 a year. What was that when I graduated from college? Man, that's outstanding. Okay, and once again, this is just a slide about the options and opportunities. So you'll be on all types of ships, military ships, cargo ships. And one thing, the picture over to the uh, left, we're really proud of. The United States Merchant Marine Academy was the first academy to accept women. Uh, we accepted women in 1974. The next academy did not do it until 1976. That's just more pictures there. And so what we talk about, what does it take for a student to get in? Well, we look at you academically. For math, we like to see pre-calculus, calculus. And for the science side, we like to see physics and chemistry. However, if a student has trigonometry, we will consider you. But remember, getting into academy is a very competitive process. So those students that have pre-calculus and calculus are very competitive. And those students that have both physics and chemistry are very competitive. We do require our students to take a, a standardized ACT or SAT test. We encourage you to take them multiple times. Now, we do what we call super score, but we don't look at the entire test. We really judge our students by their math score and their reading score. So how super score works for us is we don't care what test the score comes from. So what I mean by that, if your highest reading score is on the SAT, we're gonna use that. If your highest math score is on the ACT, we're gonna use that test to assess, uh, uh, assess if you qualify to come to our school. Our application uh, is totally online. Our application opens up May 1st. So that's really important if I get juniors online. Because if you open up your application May 1st, and then you get your transcripts and your evaluations and stuff from your counselor and teachers before they go, over, uh, go away for the summer break, you will be way ahead of your competition. Really important. Every student that comes to us must receive a senator or congressional nomination. You must pass a fitness assessment and you must become medically qualified. Your medical stand, uh, qualification is determined by the Department of Defense Medical Examination and Review Board. They will determine if you medically qualified. Now they're not really determining if you medically qualified to go to school, but remember I told you every student will become an officer, either full-time or part-time in the military. So you must be qualified to enter into military service. So our application is open up May 1st and it ends February 1st. And that's my presentation for now. If you have any questions, please visit us at uh, www.usmma.edu or you can schedule a visit. We are open for visits. We do day and overnight visits. Just email us at admissions at usmma.edu. Thank you. No, thank you, Commander Watson. <laughs> so we will go ahead and have um, 
some closing remarks from our district manager, Cletus Clendenin. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm glad that you're all able to join us tonight. Of course, always good to see uh, Commander Watson. Uh, me and him been doing this for quite some time, so great to see you. And of course, all the other presenters, thank you very much. Um, and also, um, Candia, thank you for um, organizing this event and putting this all together. Um, you know, so this is something, um, this effort to reach out to students is something that the Congresswoman um, really put in my lap several years ago. And um, now I've passed on, passed the buck on to uh, Candia. Um, because um, one of the things we were seeing is um, a lot of students from the USVI did not know about this opportunity, um, about all these opportunities, I should say. So, um, so we have been tasked to try to spread the word on this. And um, so outside of this event, we're going to continue to, um, you know, speak to parents, speak to students, uh, speak to counselors, speak to principals, let them know that, that of all these, these other options that students may have to, to get a great um, education. And of course, as you heard in a lot of cases, um, you know, you're graduating um, college in some cases with cash, and then you move on to, again, in some cases, you know, five to six digit salary. So, um, so thank you all for joining. Um, I'm going to pass it back to Candia so we could um, get to the Q&A. Moving along um, to the question and answer. Um, okay. I did have one Candia in the chat. Okay. Um, so one question is, can you join a sport? And this was for the U.S. Naval Academy, but um, I'll open it to, to all of the academies. Um, so the question was, can you join a sports team if they did not enter the program with a sport? And if you can, what's the process to do so? And so I guess we could start with the Naval Academy representative and um, if anybody else wants to chime in after that, can do that. Yeah. Uh, so it is possible. Uh, if you're not recruited for a sport, you can try to walk on to the sports. Uh, it's not necessarily easy, but it's something that you can try to do. If you have questions for a specific sport, uh, usnasports.com uh, is a great way to, uh, place to go. It has all the information for all of the coaches and all the contact information, you can send them a message and see what the process is gonna be like. Hi, uh, West Point here. Um, let me share my screen. It might take some time. I'll just go ahead and start it. So for West Point, I was recruited. Um, there is no difference in the application versus recruited athletes versus those who aren't recruited. It's the same exact application. You still have to receive a nomination as well as becoming medically qualified. However, so for my case, I ran track for a year and a half, took a semester off, did intramural sports in between, and then I went out and tried out for the D1 rugby team. So you can walk on to D1 teams. You can try out for any of our club teams as well at any point. And then at a minimum, every cadet is an athlete. So if you're not doing D1 or club sports, then you have to do intramural sports. But you can apply and try on and walk onto teams. I'd say be strategic about it. You know, look at when teams are in season versus when they're not as well as going to goarmywestpoint.com, hit up your hit up our coaches, you know, for your specific event, depending on the sports you're looking to try out for. And yes, you can try out for more than one team as well. So I kind of did that as well here. Right. Any other academies want to add to that? If not, I'll go on to the next question. Right, yeah, I was just saying, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead, Jacob, go ahead. Yes, sir. For the Coast Guard Academy, too, again, we do compete at the D3 level there, and you can always feel free to walk on in that regard. My One of my best friends, he's from the Bahamas, he came and played basketball, and he didn't like it, and came and played football as a two-time All-American. So you can always switch over, even though that may not be what you were, quote-unquote, recruited for in the beginning. Cletus, I had stepped off, but I decided to jump back on. You know, talking about uh, uh, I'm jumping between two meetings, but if you're talking about sports and stuff, the same with us, you can walk on, but even better, if you go to our website and you click for athletics, there's an athletic page. All the coaches' contact information, phone number is right there on the website. They welcome you to upload videos and, and anything, but you can reach out to them directly and, and, and shoot your shot. I mean, we recruit and we have uh, walk-ons all the time. Next question from Marcus. Thank you for your question. Um, the question is, if you are in JROTC, would it help your chances to be selected to a military academy? Lieutenant Lawrence. 
and Commander from UBI, are you there? Hey ma'am, I can answer that question for uh, West Point's perspective. So JRTC, we do offer what you call service connected nominations where you do not need to get a congressional nomination to apply. It's a new, not new type of nomination, but it's a different type of nomination. So if you're doing JRTC or ROTC, you've already did like a year or two, and now you wanna to apply to West Point, which we do accept those. So as long as you don't turn 23 before you report for our day to West Point, so you can keep applying every year, even if you don't get in your um, previous years that you've applied. But in terms of JRTC, um, we do offer the service connected nomination to those candidates. So if you're doing Army JROTC, it's automatic. You automatically have that service connected nomination, but your SAI or your military science professor or instructor or commandant from your school needs to nominate you from that school. So we only offer three nomination slots for service connected nominations per school in the entire nation. Now, if you're doing Air Force JRTC or Navy JRTC or any non-Army JRTC, and you're still trying to obtain the service connected nomination rather than having to apply for a congressional nomination, um, you will have to provide us with stating that your unit that you're currently doing JRTC for has an honors unit with, a distinct, with distinction award in the past or current year. Um, we also understand that COVID has played a role in that. Um, so depending on when COVID first started and when you were, your unit was an honor, honors unit with distinction um, unit, we'll kind of make some leadway depending on how, what's that length of gap of time between when it happened versus today's time. So there are ways in which it helps you. It also helps for your extracurriculars from the West Point application perspective. Um, if you're doing JRTC, it, it already shows that you have that military propensity to want to serve. So it actually helps you to do that. Even if you're just a squad leader, battalion commander, um, commander, whatever the case is, just being a part of JRTC helps immensely. Or doing civil prep, sea um, cadets is another one that we look at as well. Um, so yeah, that just helps overall with your um, extracurricular, extracurricular side um, for your application portion for West Point. The next question is from Nick. Good night, Nick. Um, his question is, when do applications open for the U.S. Air Force Academy? Major Spaulding, you can go ahead and answer that question. Hey, what's going on? Major Spaulding, one more time from USAFA. So uh, there is a pre-candidate questionnaire that's open right now which is really the place to start. So that every year, it just rolls from March 1st to December 31st every single year. Um, and it's it's basically open to go in and do this pre-candidate questionnaire. Uh, and then starting in, uh, around about July 1st is when they start making the selections in terms of who's going to enter the next phase, which is the candidate phase. So really, right now would be the time to go in, go to the USAFA website, find that pre-candidate questionnaire, fill that out, and from those pre-candidate questionnaires, uh, you know, potential uh, cadets are selected. And then you, somewhere around July 1st, will find out if you've entered the next phase is, is really the, how it goes. Okay, Candia, yeah, there's a question in the chat. And so um, Dale, thank you for the question. Um, can you switch majors in the academies? And if so, does changing have any effect on your graduation year? And so I'll leave that open to any of the panelists. Lieutenant Smith here again. So you can change your major while being here at the academy. Um, you would just have to talk to you, your assigned department academic counselor um, and the new department academic counselor you'll receive for changing your major. Um, I do highly recommend that um, within, within your first, you know, your time leading up to pick, picking your major and that grace period that you have to pick your major your freshman year at West Point um, to figure out what majors or majors you want to do. Um, before you kind of start thinking about, hey, I want to change or whatever the case is. So you can change. It, it just, you know, it just depends on how many more classes you have to complete um, leading up to completing your 47 month journey here at West Point. All right. Thank you for that. Any, anybody else wants to join in on that? No? Oh, here's the Congresswoman. It's the Congresswoman. We kind of lost you at the end there. I don't, yeah, Congresswoman, we kind of lost you at the end there. I'm right. hoping, uh, can you guys hear me better now? <laughs> way better, way better. Yes, thank you. Okay. Well, I just want to thank you guys, and particularly the parents, um, teachers, all the supporters who are here for the young people. And thank you, young people, for being interested in even exploring the idea 
of going into the military academies. It's a lot of work, of course, uh, to be selected, to be um, a member of one of the service academies, but we know that the payoff is, I think, well worth it. Uh, in the past few years, we've been able to increase the amount of Virgin Islanders that are not only accepted, but those that are retained and actually get through the program. And I want to thank each of you for your interest in this. Um, Candia and Cletus, you guys have done a phenomenal job, along with our nominating committee, as you guys have heard, which really does the vetting as well as providing support um, for the students who drop those packets off in our office. And um, just want to uh, thank our presenters for taking time out of their evening to answer the questions that, as I came on, I heard uh, them answering some questions from the students. So I'm going to get back off. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be with you. Congress is in session. It's pretty busy uh, right now. Wednesday and Thursdays are our busiest days. And I'm actually heading back to another Zoom call um, about discussions about the uh, Supreme Court nominee and ensuring that we have enough support for her to eventually, it is our belief, be uh, confirmed. Um, those hearings will start taking place March 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, where she will present before uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee. And then hopefully it will be brought out of committee and she will be confirmed and then sworn in as the first black female Supreme Court justice, which is an appointment for life. And so we're all really excited about that. I, having, uh, I am an attorney, I uh, practice law, so this is really a, a great milestone for so many of us that have worked hard, but to see someone who's so absolutely qualified have reached this point finally. Um, I don't know if, Cletus, Candia, if there were any questions in the chat that anyone may have for me before I leave, but I um, before I wanted to offer that before I stepped off. As of right now, I don't see any, but um, yeah, I don't see any for you directly right now, no. Just so you all know, we have internship opportunities in our office. Uh, during the school year, for those of you who can work it out in your schedules, along with during the summers in both our St. Croix, our St. Thomas, as well as our DC offices. We've had lots of students come through, some who have gone on to stay involved in politics, others who have gone to law school, um, getting their masters, be engaged in the community in lots of ways and some who even graduated from college and come back to work in the office full time, both in the district as well as in Washington, D.C. So this is a great way, um, opportunity for you all, if you're interested in an internship, to show uh, some community service if you want, uh, also to find out more about how your government works for you, to be engaged, to support the people of the Virgin Islands, and also have something interesting to put on your resume and be able to talk about during college applications. So thank you guys for that. And thank you everyone once again for being a part of the discussion. Thank you, Congresswoman. <laughs> yeah, so real quick, I'd also like to give a quick shout out to um, Chad Martinez. Um, that's another Academy parent we have um, on the meeting here today. So thank you, Chad, for joining. Um, let me see. So we do have a question about basic training. Um, I think it's from Declan. Um, what is BMT like at the academies and are there and are they similar? So Candia, I don't know if you want to choose two presenters or to answer that one or <laughs> um, we can ask Commander Watson, is he still there? Okay, if not, um, we can do um, Commander yeah, he's at another Chief. meeting. Okay, what about Commander Brown or Lieutenant Brown? <laughs> yeah, I answered that question there. Okay. Could you repeat it in? again, Cleus? I heard are they similar, but I missed the, the first part of it. Yeah, what is BMT like at the academies, and are they similar? The I, I'm honestly BMT. They might have to fill me in on BMT. Talk about basic training, or yeah, I guess I mean so. I guess yeah, that's. 
I guess like boot camp is it would be the equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so, yeah. Yep, just to make sure I had it right there. And so for us, we call our swap summer indoctrination is eight weeks long and the other comp other schools probably call it plebe summer. I think the Merchant Marine Academy has a different name for it. But again, for us it's swap summer and is is that indoctrination period for eight weeks, one week of which you'll spend on the Bark Eagle, which is the nation's only military active duty seagoing tall ship. And so, yeah, for the basic there, you know, you're going to get basic training. <laughs> you're going to get yelled at. You're going to learn the ranks, rates and ranks for every branch of the U.S. Armed Forces. So us, Marines, so on and so forth. Enlisted and officer, you're going to do your push-up sit-ups under your custom and courtesies. A lot of times, at least for the officer corps, our ranks are the same. They look the same. A yellow bar or butter bar, as we call them, is the same whether you're in the Coast Guard or whether you're in the Marines or the Army. And so, you know, again, there from that regard, you can learn all those base level things to be a foundationally ready and fit U.S. Armed Force member, if that makes sense. Well, I see Courtney answered in the chat as well. Um, so she left a link um, to West Point. So it's um, www.westpoint.edu slash military slash Department of Military Instruction and Cadet Summer Training. So thank you for that, um, Courtney. Um, I think I see one more question in here. Um, I think it's from the same student. Yeah, so, yes, if someone is currently 16 but turns 17 at the end of their school year, are they still el eligible to be chosen if they do take the pre-questionnaire for the U.S. Air Force Academy? So we have Yusafa still on? Yeah, I'm still here. I actually answered in the chat, but we're really talking about the 2027 year group now. So... Um, we, let's talk in your group, not ages, in terms of when they're eligible to attend. So, you know, notifications are going to go out uh, this uh, really next month. Where are we? Yeah, next month in terms of the 2026 graduation class. So, uh, anybody eligible for 2027 graduation? Now's the time. Okay, I think that concludes all the questions. Glidden, did we get to answer I, all the questions? Yeah, I just saw one or two more popped up. Um, Oh, okay. One, yeah, so you want to do it or? Okay, so from an anonymous attendee, um, good evening. I'm not sure if I missed this or if this is the subject that was touched. Is there a vaccination requirement to attend? Um, I think we'll leave that open for all academies. For the U.S. Coast Guard Academy, that is affirmative and correct. We are requiring individuals to be vaccinated upon reporting. That's the same for the Naval Academy. Uh, I think it's it's same for you, Safa, probably for all of us. Yep, same here for West Point, double vaccinated at a minimum. And I would assume the same for Merchant Marines. And last question. Um, can you transfer and be part of the UBI ROTC? I don't think we have anyone from the ROTC on. Yeah. And... And I think how that would probably work, it'd be more likely that the, um, if you start off at UVI in the ROTC program, um, then you should, uh, up until age of 23, in most cases, you should be able to transfer from UVI to one of these academies if you're accepted. So I hope that answers the question. And if I didn't, um, we'll hang on one second to, me to see if uh, we did get it from anonymous attendee as well. Yeah, and thank you for that chat as well. Chad just added, all military services have always required vaccines, and that is typically true. Once you get in, you get lined up, you get your shots, <laughs> and you go. Uh, yes. Okay, and yes, it looks like we did answer the question from an anonymous attendee, so thank you very much. Great. I guess this concludes. So thank you all once again for joining this evening. It was wonderful once again. Um, thank you to our presenters for taking time out of your busy schedules to share this information with students of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me. I am here in the District of St. Croix, and the office number here is 340-778-5900. And Cletus, can you share your number over on St. Thomas? Yes, we are 340-774-4408. 
Perfect. And we are willing to assist any student in the nomination um, process um, to submit to our office. Um, the deadline for those packets are October 31st. And um, we look forward to each and every one of you um, submitting one of those nomination packets. Um, it was good once again, and we hope to see you guys submitting those packets in our office sometime this year. Be safe. Until then, we are out. Thank you.